the news talk YTV spoke about range anxiety. I've just done 70 kilometres today. My feet are a bit cold. It's not quite summer yet. Perhaps a little bit saddle sore. But in terms of me personally, no range anxiety. I couldn't find any manufacturer's estimates for range. It's dependent on several factors. Probably most importantly, your weight and the amount of effort you're putting in, though also the terrain, tyre pressures, suspension setup, the amount of wind and the ascent climbs that you're doing. Though in a mixed mode ride yesterday, perhaps 55% in Tour Plus, 5% in Turbo, 40% in EMTB, I'm getting easily over 100 kilometres per charge, calculated on my 70 kilometres using 65% of the battery charge. It's not raining today, well, not too much, a few spots. But there's been above average rainfall since June last year, apart from January, though overall for the past eight months, there's been 47 millimetres per month more rainfall than the long-term average. Doesn't sound like a lot, does it? But it's a tipping point. The ground's free draining around here, though the water table is so high now that even moderate rain causes puddles in places I've never seen puddles before, and all the excess water's taking longer to drain. Type this search into Copilot, or you can copy and paste it from the description. Are push bikes the most energy efficient means of transport? Least energy per kilometre travelled even than electric cars, surprisingly. Even than electric cars, surprisingly. It's interesting that Copilot finds this so significant. Clever Copilot. In summary, nothing beats the bike. I sometimes get the impression that lots of people think climate change will be happening in 2050. And oh, sure, it'll be grand. It'll be grand if we make the change to EVs and renewable energy more quickly than we are. Otherwise, the sky will fall down more frequently. What's brought all this on, you may ask? A comment on a news talk, YTV, where a used car dealer said that EVs aren't quite there yet. And I've heard other people say this. Interestingly, only those who don't actually own an EV, all those that I've spoken to who do own an EV and drive an EV, a four-wheel car type EV, are all delighted with them. E-bikes are also EVs and they're the most efficient EVs. I burnt 1,200 plus calories yesterday on my 70 kilometre trip to the wind farm and was half a kilo lighter this morning. I am a firm believer in long duration aerobic exercise for weight loss, for burning fat. So for those of you who watch my channel for the weight loss and fitness aspect, I highly recommend that you commute to work on an e-bike. The average commute to work in the US and I suspect most developed world cities is 16 miles, 25 kilometres. It takes me around 50 minutes on a calm day to cycle to the post office in Labashida and back, 32 minutes in a car, I've timed myself. Though if you consider that I got a 50 minute aerobic workout, then I'm actually up 18 minutes because I didn't have to go to the gym. I wonder if that's the right way to calculate it. I did a few searches on different search engines. Does DHL use EVs? Certainly. DHL has been actively adopting electric vehicles in its logistics operations. The truck consumed on average 50% less energy for the same job compared to its diesel counterpart. DHL has been adding electric trucks continuously since 2020. I guess it must be working out for them, or they'd have stopped. Do FedEx use EVs? Yes, 
FedEx is actively incorporating electric vehicles into its fleet as part of its commitment to sustainability, FedEx has now added more than 70 e cargo bikes to its operations in European cities. FedEx continues advancing fleet electrification goals. Does UPS use EVs? UPS continues to deploy electric vehicles throughout North America, Europe and Asia. The 22nd of May, UPS has been researching, testing and deploying electric vehicles since the 1930s. They have a rich history of incorporating sustainable practices into their operations. UPS has committed to purchase up to 10,000 electric vehicles from UK. Do Amazon use EVs? Amazon has partnered with Rivian, an electric vehicle manufacturer, to create custom electric delivery vans. These vans are specifically designed for Amazon's delivery fleet and are part of the company's efforts to decarbonize its transportation network. As of now, Amazon has rolled out more than 10,000 custom electric delivery vans across the United States. The goal is to have 100,000 electric delivery vehicles on the road by 2030. DHL have just ordered 12 electric planes. They're zero emissions, quiet and economical to operate. Anyways, these large logistic companies aren't adopting EVs because it's fashionable. They're doing it because there's an economical benefit. Directors don't get their bonuses unless they're making a loot for the shareholders. That's all you really want to know if you're considering buying an EV. They're more economical. The average cost to per kilometre to run an EV car is five cents, so let's double that and say ten cents, including maintenance, etc. The average cost to run a diesel car is twenty-three cents per kilometre, including maintenance, etc. So, somewhat comparable to the DHL EV truck example, consuming fifty percent less energy than the diesel equivalent. One EV owner nearby have had their Nissan Leaf for over 10 years and can be quoted as saying it's a no-brainer. Is that a long-term enough review to convince you that EVs are quite here now? It's raining again. Washing the fields and all that nutrient into the streams and rivers, under the bridges and onto the estuary and mud flats. A spectacular landscape built with mud. Though it's possible there will be less natural land reclamation or farmer facilitated cattle grazing area increase in the future as rainfall is predicted to increase with global warming. There might be more, though either way there won't be as much soil further up the water chain so to speak. I normally wash the sediment of the ceramic fine particulate filter once, possibly twice in six months. I've washed it over half a dozen times in the last three. Still, I love the taste of the water and the peace of mind that it's a healthier option, both for me and the planet. No plastic bottled water. Trees help stabilize the soil reducing sediment and nutrient runoff. They capture carbon and are a vital component to the global earth ecosystem, facilitating all life. The more sod in the ground, the more likelihood there is they'll be blown over and die prematurely. 
even in moderate winds. Wind speeds are predicted to increase as the Earth's temperature rises. Back to my critique of the news talk YTV. Range anxiety. Not something that any of the EV owners I've spoken to even mentioned, so I doubt it's an issue. Charging infrastructure is being improved all the time, so I wouldn't let that deter you. Cost and depreciation. Technology is improving so rapidly these days that increased rates of depreciation are inevitable. There's more competition in the marketplace for EVs and that will also drive costs down. AI tools will accelerate improvements in battery technology, increased energy density, faster charging times, and that should also decrease push prices down. And that can only be a good thing for the consumer. The cost of electricity is likely to decrease and if you install your own solar PV and battery storage, then the price will be predictable. Whereas the oil price has always been volatile. Even now, the cost of running an EV is half that of a nice car and the cost of new or second-hand EVs is comparable. It's a no-brainer. It's not just climate change or cost. Another factor for me is the toxic pollution caused by burning fossil fuels, diesel and petrol. When I'm out on the bike, I wear a mask to try and decrease the amount of diesel particulate I have to breathe in if a tractor, car or truck goes by. Though I'm loving the EMTB, it's loads of fun on the public roads and SUV tracks. Oh no, the rain again. But I do want to be positive and encourage the adoption of green technology, EVs, and that does include cars. They are handy sometimes. This isn't an EV. All donations gratefully appreciated so I can get one. Though most stuff can be delivered these days and if you get an e-bike for shorter journeys, commuting, then you can significantly reduce your carbon footprint, increase your chances of living a long and healthy life, save a lot of money and if fat weight loss is your goal then they'll certainly help with that. I was going to load the bike into the car and drive up to the wind farm for a few final takes and I thought, do you know what? All that hassle of loading the bike into the car, taking it out again twice, and I probably wouldn't have saved any time really, so I cycled. 56 kilometers round trip, consuming 890 calories, and it was no bother. EMTB mode on the way up, turbo mode on the way back down, it was breezy, and guess what? Squally showers, not forecast. There's a surprise. Anyway, despite using the power modes, the headwinds and 540 meters of ascent, there was 25% battery left. I've done 250 kilometers in the past 10 days, and it's been effortless. It's cost me 88 cents to charge the battery. That works out at less than a third of a cent per kilometre. Let's say half a cent per kilometre, including maintenance, etc. Check out all these ecosystem friendly battery charges. Wind turbines are mighty, probably a bit impractical for most households. Though, if you can manage to install solar PV with battery storage, then you'll more or less run your EV for nothing. Thanks, Emil, for watching. Good luck.